If you're one of the thousands of people who got one of these inexpensive projectors in the last few weeks, hopefully you are already enjoying it. But in this quick video, I'm going to show you a few cheap and free changes that you can make to significantly increase the picture quality from something that looks like this into something more like this. For this video, I'll be using the Haprun H1 projector, which has been my budget pick for the last two years. But this stuff applies to almost any sub $200 projector. First, the biggest pain point on these projectors is focus, since cheap projectors use cheap optics, which have a much smaller sweet spot where the entire image is in focus. Another issue is that proper focus requires the use of both the keystone tilt mechanism and the focus wheel, which can be a bit tricky. So to start, get your projector set up as close to centered on your screen as possible, and use the focus wheel to get the middle horizontal section of the screen in focus as much as you can. After that, use the keystone adjustment lever to get the top and bottom of the screen to be in focus at the same time. It might not be possible to get it exactly perfect, but the good news is that slight focus issues are really only noticeable with text. So if you watch a lot of sports like golf where the scoreboard is at the top, you should favor top focus, but football scores are usually at the bottom, so perfect bottom focus makes a lot more sense. Unfortunately, having to use the keystone adjustment for focus sometimes leaves you with trapezoid shaped edges. So having a screen with a thick black border can help you hide that. My favorite budget screen is the IKEA 100 inch Manual B, which is usually around $70, but dark curtains can also do the trick if you're projecting straight onto a wall. Next, one of the best things that you can do for any projector or TV, regardless of price, is to forget about the built-in operating system and use a streaming stick instead. Purpose-built streaming sticks give you much better control of settings like dynamic range, color format, and frame rate, and their apps are updated much more often, giving you better compatibility and all the newest features. For most inexpensive projectors, the 1080p Fire TV stick is all you need, and it goes on sale for around $25 a few times a month. But if you want something more future-proof, in my testing, the 4K Fire TV Max is the best streaming stick on the market, and it's usually only about $40 on all the Amazon big sale days. During the Fire Stick setup, you'll be asked what brand your projector is, so you can control it with the Fire TV remote. And the good news is that almost all of these cheap projectors use the exact same infrared profile. So you can scroll all the way down to Yabber and complete the setup wizard, which will let you control your projector's power and volume with the Fire TV remote. I've confirmed that this profile works for both the Groveview JQ818C and the Hapron H1, which are my suggested budget projectors, but as I said, there's a good chance they'll work for dozens of other brands too. The next thing to change will be the Fire TV's display settings, which will lock down the signal to what your projector can actually handle because these inexpensive projectors aren't always set up properly and sometimes their HDMI port will tell the source it has more capabilities than it actually has, which can cause a lot of unexpected behaviors. First, set your resolution to 1080p 60Hz and make sure your color depth is set to 8-bit because that's all the LCD screens used in these projectors can handle. Next, set the color format to YCBCR and last, under dynamic range settings, change it from adaptive to disable HDR. High dynamic range sounds like something you might want, but we're going to disable it because even if your cheap projector supports it, it isn't nearly bright enough to properly display an HDR image, and the result will be a dull image with dim highlights and poor overall colors. After that, we're going to jump into the projector settings to calibrate brightness and contrast, which are confusingly named for what they actually do. Brightness controls how dark the picture signal needs to be before your display interprets it as pure black, and contrast does the same thing but for white values. Set the brightness too low and you'll crush shadow detail, but set it too high and your display will never show true blacks. And similarly, setting contrast too high will blow out highlights, resulting in loss of detail in bright areas, while setting it too low will make the image look flat and dull. When we set the Fire TV's color format to YCBCR earlier, we locked it into what's sometimes called RGB limited, which is how SDR content is mastered. So now we need to set the projector's brightness and contrast accordingly. Go into your projector's image menu and set it to user mode, then click on brightness. Next, we're going to use this pattern to manually set the brightness. To do this, you'll want to make sure that you're using your projector in the same lighting conditions that you'll be watching movies, and give your eyes a minute or two to adjust to the room's lighting. This image has a reference area that's equal to the RGB triplet 171717, with 161616 directly next to it to the right, and then 000 on the far right. You're going to want to adjust the brightness up enough so you can see all four stripes, and then you're going to reduce it down so that the right two sections are indistinguishable from each other, but the reference section is still noticeable. If you're watching this video on a monitor and not a projector, you might be in RGB full mode, in which case all four bands should remain distinguishable, and this pattern won't work for calibrating your brightness. 
After that's done, we're going to calibrate the contrast using this pattern, where the reference white is the RGB triplet 234, 234, 234, which is one step back from the brightest white you should be able to easily distinguish. First, lower your contrast value until you can see the box on the right, and gradually raise it until the box on the right goes away, but the stripe on the left is still easily distinguishable from the background. When the contrast is set up perfectly, the box in the middle of the stripe should be very difficult or impossible to see. The remaining picture options are color, which controls the saturation of the image, tint, which will shift the image from a more green hue to a more magenta hue, sharpness, which adds a thin white line in between the dark areas and midtones to make the edges stand out more, and color temperature, which shifts the image between a cooler blue-white balance and a warmer, more yellow-white balance. For these settings, I'd recommend keeping the sharpness at or close to zero, but for color, tint, and temperature, it's mostly going to be just to your preference, since setting those up properly requires thousands of dollars of calibration equipment and software. Once you've got all those settings dialed in, fire up your favorite movie and enjoy your new properly set up projector. I've said it before, but these cheap LCD projectors like the Haprun H1 have no business being as good as they are for $75, and an untrained eye would have trouble choosing between them and a much more expensive 1080p projector. Speaking of, coming up in February, I will be exploring the 200 to $600 price range for projectors, so leave a comment if you have a specific projector request to be included in that video. And next week I'll be at CES where I'm sure we'll see tons of new, hopefully increasingly affordable projectors. Links to all the items in this video are down in the description, and as always I appreciate it if you use those links since as an Amazon affiliate I do earn a small commission on the sale at no cost to you. If you enjoyed this video don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.